So I, I want to go back to something we talked about earlier uh, and maybe help define it for the people a little bit. Um, can you help define for us what an immune modulator is, what it does? Uh, it is kind of general term, which I don't even think it's just too, too elegant or anything like that. Um, it is, um, if it's a natural, meaning the molecule has to come from a natural source. Sometimes you can have a modulator which is completely synthetic, but um, the term immunomodulator means that it's something which uh, either in the plastic tube or in our body will modulate or change individual parts of the immune system so it works differently. You can basically consider even an immunosuppressive drug an immunomodulator because it modulates the immune system. So it's better to talk about if it's a stimulator or suppressor. But it is something which will affect our immune system and change its activities and abilities. So from, the, from your research, of course, beta-glucan affects it in a very positive way. Yes, yes. Uh, and in our body, we n- usually need a, a positive way. We need a stimulation. Only in cases like we talk about the autoimmune diseases or transplantation, we need the opposite. We need to suppress the system so the system is not fighting the, the new kidney. Yeah. Yeah, and I think in today's world, especially when we're all bombarded by, uh, you know, pollutants in the air and the water and our stresses at, at work and other things that we do, it's probably uh, pretty important to to do everything we can to boost the immune system. It is. It is. It's um, something which is usually neglected, but uh, for a lot of our, our problems in last decades, it's, it's, they are our problems. It's a situation where we live, the conditions, how we live, what we eat, um, the pollution in the air, water, and so on. It's causing the diseases. It's, um, it's a common knowledge uh, even about uh, the allergy diseases. Um, there are dozens of studies from, from Iceland where for decades there was, was very little uh, allergy in Iceland. They have no trees. Uh, grasses they have, don't have the allergic pollen and so on. So the level of allergy in Iceland, particularly among kids, was maybe one-tenth of what's found in Europe or United States. And last decade, the conditions changed there. They still don't have trees. They still have the same grass, but they're eating differently. They have a bigger towns, factories, and so on. And now, last two, three years, the level of allergies in Iceland kids is identical to Western Europe. So you change the condition, change the food, you just are not healthy like you used to be. So we have to think about it. We can hardly change uh, how, how clear the air or will be. We might change the, the nutrition a little bit. We might change what we eat, we can go for for better better vegetable, something like that. But the, the conditions of the of the life will be the same, 